Hi to all. The next topic that we will discuss are the special senses. The special senses respond to stimuli involved in vision, hearing, balance, taste, touch, and smell. Napakarami nating receptors and this variety of receptors are housed in special sense organs. Ito yung ating eyes, ears, mouth, skin, and nose. And they help detect stimuli in our surroundings. Without our special senses, we could not see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. But take note that it's the brain who processes and interprets all the information. Medium lang ang lahat ng ito para makarating yung mga sense na ini-interpret ng brain. As a recall, yung temporal lobe ng brain, nandiyan yung hearing, taste, smell. Occipital lobe, vision, and parietal lobe, general sensation. And as we go through each of these senses, we will also try to understand ano yung mga cranial nerves na nag innervate no? Para makarating yung sense ma-interpret yung sense to and from the brain. The first that we will discuss is the eyes or the sense of sight. Of all the senses, vision has been the most studied and majority of sensory receptors in the body are in the eyes. Uh, we rely heavily on it and uh, we often have to see it to believe it. Now, let us further discuss the structures of the eyes. The adult eye is a sphere that measures about 1 inch in diameter. Pero, yung anterior 1 six lang ng mata yung usually nakikita. The rest of it is enclosed and protected by a cushion of fat and the walls of the bony orbit. First are the eyebrows, eyelids, and eyelashes. They protect the eyes. Whenever we blink, yung mata natin nagpo-produce ng mucus to lubricate the eyes, which is a protective function. Not blinking will cause dryness and it may damage the eyes. Yung eyebrows, saka yung eyelashes, they are hairs and they filter dirt or prevent external debris from entering the eyes. Next, conjunctiva. It lines the eyelids. It covers the part of the outer surface of the eyeball. Again, as mentioned kanina, whenever we blink, nagpo-produce ang ating eyes ng mucus. And that's the conjunctiva who does it. It secretes mucus which lubricates the eyeball and keep it moist. It prevents dryness of the eyes. The conjunctiva has two distinct structures, yung bulbar conjunctiva and the palpebral conjunctiva. Si bulbar conjunctiva, its normal finding is clear. Yung palpebral conjunctiva naman, ang normal findings niya, it should be pinkish in color. And because conjunctiva is the outermost lining of our eyes, madalas na infect or na inflame siya. Conjunctivitis or yung sore eyes or pink eye, it's infection or inflammation of the conjunctiva. Lacrimal apparatus. Ang ating lacrimal apparatus, it consists of the lacrimal gland and a number of ducts that drain lacrimal secretions into the nasal cavity. Yung lacrimal gland, siya yung gumagawa ng tears. Dalawa yan, Upper, outer cantus of both right and left eyes. Tears dilute salt solution which contains antibodies and lysozymes. So because it contains antibodies, lysozymes, tears cleanse and protect the eye surface as they at the same time moisten and lubricate it. Yung lacrimal secretions ngayon nagpo-produce yung lacrimal gland ng tears, and then lumalabas siya dun sa mga maliliit na ducts ng ating mata, may kanaliculi, and then nakakunay kasi yan sa lacrimal sac that drains directly into nasolacrimal duct. Kaya pag tayo'y umiiyak, bukod sa may 
tumutulo sa ating mata, may tumutulo din sa ating nose. Pero yung tumutulo sa mata natin, it simply uh, tears na very watery. Pero yung lumalabas sa ating nose, hindi lang siya watery. Mas thick yung consistency niya kasi sumasama na siya dun sa thicker nasal mucus. Lacrimal secretions increase substantially when eyes are irritated by foreign objects or chemicals. Plus, kung tayo ay emotionally upset. So, yun yung mga pagkakataon na tayo ay naiiyak. Next are the ocular muscles. There are six extrinsic eye muscles. Ito yung mga external eye muscles and they are attached to the outer surface of each eye. Ang mga eye muscles na to ay responsible for what we call the extraocular movements. So these are the muscles which produce gross eye movements and make it possible for the eyes to follow a moving object. Lateral rectus muscle moves the eye laterally. It is being controlled by the cranial nerve number 6. The medial rectus moves the eye medially, controlled by oculomotor. Superior rectus muscle elevates the eye and turns it medially, controlled by cranial nerve number 3, oculomotor then. Inferior rectus depresses eye and turns it medially, controlled by oculomotor also. Superior oblique depresses eye and turns it laterally, which is also controlled or again controlled by another cranial nerve, the trochlear. And lastly, inferior oblique muscle elevates eye and turns it laterally, controlled again by oculomotor. So yung <coughs> six extraocular movements are controlled by three cranial nerves, three, four, and six. Ang mga muscles na to ay responsible din sa tinatawag nating convergence. Convergence is the reflexive movement of the eyes medially when we view close objects. When convergence occurs, both eyes are aimed toward uh, the near object being viewed. Kaya nga, may mga pagkakataon para tayong naduduling. Therefore, uh, reflexive movement din ang eyes yun, which we call convergence. Next is sclera. It's the fibrous outermost layer of protection ng ating eyes. It's thick, glistening, and it's a white connective tissue. The eye itself, called the eyeball, is a hollow sphere. So, yung outermost layer niya, na fibrous layer, which consists of sclera and cornea. Pero si sclera lang yung nakikita anteriorly as the white of the eye. Previously mentioned, dalawa kasi yung fibrous layer ng eyes. Second don is the transparent cornea. It's the central anterior portion and it is crystal clear. Unlike the sclera, fibrous layer siya, pero color white. The cornea receives light that enters the eye. This window is where light enters. Most no, uh, are uh, uh, well supplied with nerve endings. Kaya nga, dahil marami siyang nerve ending. No, yung pain fibers, when the cornea is touched, we blink, nag increase yung tear production natin. Uh, pero, wala siyang blood vessel. Kaya, ito lang yung only tissue in the body na maaaring i-transplant from one person to another without the worry of rejection. Dahil walang blood vessel ang cornea, therefore, beyond reach siya ng immune system to reject. Choroid is a vascular nutritive layer. Ito yung middle layer ng ating eyeball. At dahil vascular layer siya, maraming blood vessel, marami siyang nutrition. Most posterior uh, is the choroid. So meron itong mga dark pigment as you see in the photo. And that dark pigment prevents light from scattering inside the eye. 
it forms two smooth muscle structures, the ciliary body and the iris. Ciliary body, as shown in the photo, is a smooth muscle structure which anchors the lens in place. It produces aqueous humor. It's a watery, thick substance uh, filling the space between the lens and the cornea. What is aqueous humor? It's uh, similar to blood plasma. Its most important function is to maintain intraocular pressure. Now, in the lower photo, you will see there a healthy eye and an eye with glaucoma. Glaucoma is a group of eye conditions, merong acute, merong chronic, that may lead to blindness, often caused by an abnormally high pressure in the eyes. Nadadamage nito yung optic nerve, the health of which is very vital for good vision. Treatments may vary from eye drops to surgery. Second, the aqueous humor provides nutrition. May amino acids, may glucose, specifically sa lens and cornea na avascular. Third, it contains immunoglobulin and it is for immune functions. Next is the iris. It's a smooth muscle structure which provides eye color. Depende sa lahe, yung eye color. Usually, us Filipinos, we have darker uh, colors of the iris. It has a round, open, cold pupil. And that pupil regulates light that enters the eye. Yung pupil, sa pag-regulate niya, nung pumapasok na ilaw, we can see as clearly as possible in the available light. Now, in close vision and bright light, yung circular muscles na yan nagko-contract to constrict the pupils. When the eyes are suddenly exposed sa bright light, yung pupils immediately magko-constrict yan. Yun yung tinatawag nating photopopillary reflex or the papillary reflex. This is a protective reflex and it prevents excessively bright light from damaging the delicate photoreceptors inside our eyes. Now, in distant vision and dim lights, yun ang mga, mga radial fibers na contract para magdilate ng pupils. This allows more light to enter the eyes. Cranial nerve 3 or the oculomotor nerve controls the muscles of the iris. Ano ngayon yung nakalagay dyan na PERLA? PERLA is an acronym to assess specifically yung pupils ng eye. It stands for pupils equal, round, and reactive to light and accommodation. So when we say equal, both the right and the left pupils should be equal in size, in shape. It's round. Reactive to light because when you uh, place or use a pen light to check pupil constriction, again, it should constrict. The pupillary reflex is further discussed and it's a part of uh, your practical application sa laboratory. And accommodation will be discussed further later on. The retina is the innermost sensory layer containing the photoreceptors of the eyes. Ang photoreceptors, ito yung nagre-respond sa light. Photoreceptor cells, well-distributed siya over the entire retina, except where the optic nerve leaves the eyeball. And uh, ang tawag dun sa area na yun uh, ay uh, blind spot. No? Yung site na yun is the optic disc, at dahil nga walang photoreceptor sa optic disc, blind spot yon sa ating vision as shown in the photo. There are two uh, photoreceptors, the cones and the rods. Yung cones, ito ay para sa fine vision and color vision. Cones allow us to see the details of our world in color under bright light. Merong tatlong variety ng cones na nagre-respond either blue, green, or red. If you now lack these cones, nagre-result siya sa total color blindness. Pero pag merong 
isang cone lang uh, na nagkaka-problem, nag-lead siya sa partial color blindness. Maraming color blind people yung unaware dun sa condition nila. Kasi, uh, these people have learned to rely on other cues, such as differences in the intensities of the same color to distinguish green from red, for example, sa mga traffic signals. And because genes regulating the color vision are on the X chromosomes, color blindness is a sex-linked inherited trait or condition. It occurs almost exclusively sa mga lalaki. Second are the rods. Rods are responsible sa peripheral vision and night vision. They allow us to see in gray tones kahit na dim yung light. And again, nagpo-provide nga siya ng ating uh, visual fields. Anything that interferes now with the function of the rod hinders our ability to see at night. At yun yung night blindness. Its most common cause is uh, problems or a prolonged vitamin A deficiency, which eventually causes the neural retina to deteriorate. Ang vitamin A, isa siya sa building blocks ng pigment uh, ng photoreceptor cells na kailangan para mag-respond to light. Now, in the photo, we also see that lateral to each blind spot, is the fovea centralis. Ito ay isang tiny pit na meron lang cones. This is the area of the eye with the greatest visual acuity or ito yung tinatawag na point of sharpest vision. And anything we wish to view critically is focused here on the fovea centralis. In this photo, you see an instrument called ophthalmoscope and a doctor checks the eyes through ophthalmoscopy. Ang ophthalmoscope is an instrument that illuminates the interior of the eyeball, including the retina, the optic disc, pati yung mga internal blood vessels dun sa fundus or posterior wall of the eye. Na-review tsaka na-examine siya only using an ophthalmoscope. And ophthalmoscopy is the procedure. Lens. Ang lens ay isang flexible, biconvex, crystal-like structure. Ang importanteng function ng lens, it focuses light that enters the eye. It divides the eye also into two chambers. Yung anterior chamber, nandoon yung aqueous humor. Yung posterior chamber naman, nandoon yung vitreous humor, which we will further discuss later kung ano yung vitreous humor. Yung resting eye natin, it is actually set for distant vision. In general, yung light na nanggagaling sa distant source, which is standard na sa 20 feet away, approaches the eye as parallel rays. At yung lens, hindi niya na kailangang mag-change ng shape para ma-focus niya directly yung light into the retina. E eh, di ba, nandun sa retina yung mga photoreceptors. However, kapag tayo ay tumitingin sa close object, nagsispread no? yung lens, nagiging more convex pa siya para ma-accommodate at ma-focus yung light well directly on the retina. And as mentioned earlier, pupils constrict when suddenly exposed to bright lights, at yun nga yung tinatawag nating photo, pupillary reflex. Nagko-constrict din siya reflexively when we view close objects. This accommodation, uh, pupillary reflex, provides a more acute vision. Yun yung tinatawag nating accommodation. And again, recall the acronym I mentioned kanina, which is PERLA. Pupils equal round and reactive to light and accommodation. So again, accommodation is the ability of the eyes to focus specifically for close objects less than 20 feet away. In this photo, you see a normal lens that is transparent and a lens which is clouded by cataract. 
cataract is the loss of lens transparency. Kaya nagkakaroon ng hazy vision and distorted, eventually it can cause blindness. The cataract in this photo appears as a milky structure na parang nag-feel ng pupils ng mata. In youth, yung lens natin is transparent. Ang consistency niya para siyang firm jelly. But as we age, nagiging increasingly hard and cloudy ang lens. That's normal and natural, pero may iba pang risk factors for forming cataracts including diabetes mellitus, frequent exposure sa intense sunlight, or even heavy smoking. Currently, uh, ang mga treatment sa cataracts, either special cataract glasses or pwede rin ang surgical removal of the lens and replacement with a lens implant. Going back, nakikita na natin dito again yung cornea. It receives the light that enters the eye. So, para siyang yung door ng ating mata. Pupil regulates the light. Kaya, tinatanggap niya yung pinapapasok na light ni cornea para ma-regulate. And then, si lens, siya yung magfo-focus ng light na yon directly on the retina. Kaya, in the photo, you will see the image is directly focused on the retina. And the retina contains the photoreceptors nandoon yung cones and rods. And eventually, uh, mag-e-empty yung mga yon dito sa optic disc, dire-diretsyo papuntang optic nerve so that light uh, will be interpreted by the brain. Normal vision occurs when light is focused directly on the retina. So that's for a fact. Pero, meron tayong mga refractory problems which we call myopia and hyperopia. So again, the normal photo you see is the lens focusing the light directly on the photoreceptors in the retina. Pero, if the lens focuses just in front of the retina, the person is said to be nearsighted. Yun yung myopia. If the lens now focuses the light behind the retina, a person is farsighted and that's hyperopia. Because these are refractory problems or problems of the lens na kokorekt siya with contact lenses or glasses or pwedeng surgery re lens replacement. Another refractory problem is astigmatism. In myopia and hyperopia, yung focal points are either in front or behind the retina. Pero sa astigmatism, yung focal points dumadami. One focal point lang dapat siya within the retina, but if the focal point becomes multiple, that's where you see astigmatism. Here, it's either the cornea or the lens yung merong mismatch curves. And similar to myopia or hyperopia, nakokorekt din siya through corrective lenses or refractive surgery. The last of the structures of the eye that we will discuss is the vitreous humor. Ang vitreous humor, it's the posterior chamber filled with gel-like substance. Ang importanteng function ng vitreous humor, nandiyan halos yung bulk nung pagiging bilog ng mata, it prevents the eyeball from collapsing inward by reinforcing it internally. Also, tumutulong din ang vitreous humor to maintain intraocular pressure together with the aqueous humor. The next that we will discuss now is the sense of hearing or the ears. Ang ears, meron siyang dalawang importanting function. One, yung hearing apparatus. It allows us to hear an extraordinary range of sound. Second, 
our highly sensitive equilibrium receptors. They keep our nervous system continually up to date sa position and movements lalo na ng head. So itong dalawang sense organs na to, sense of hearing and sense of equilibrium, they are both housed together in the ears, but their receptors respond to different stimuli at na-activate sila independently of one another. Ang tawag sa receptors ng ears are mechanoreceptors. Kung sa eyes, we have the photoreceptors. Sa ears, we have the mechanoreceptors. This is the anatomy of the ear. So anatomically, the ear is divided into three major areas. The external or outer ear as shown in photo A, the middle ear B, and the internal or inner ear C. Yung external and middle ear structures are involved with hearing only. Pero yung internal ear functions both in hearing and in equilibrium. External ear. Yung oracle, it collects and directs sound waves into auditory canal. And yung external auditory canal, yung meatus, yun yung butas ng tenga. But the canal itself, it contains seruminous glands which secretes waxy yellow cerumen or earwax. Important ito to provide a sticky trap for foreign bodies and they also repel insects. Tympanic membrane, the canal, ends at the eardrum. So, ito yung nagsa-separate from external tsaka yung middle ear. Sa tympanic membrane or yung eardrum, dito nagva-vibrate yung sound that enters the ear. Yung sound waves na pumapasok ng auditory canal, eventually, ihihit yung tympanic membrane. Kaya nga siya eardrum. So, as if a drum, pinukpok mo, nag-vibrate. Middle ear. The middle ear is flanked laterally by the eardrum and medially by a bony wall with two openings, yung oval at yung round window. Nandiyan din ang pharyngotympanic tube. It runs obliquely downward to link the middle ear with throat. Kaya nga magkakaroon posible ng otitis media ang isang tao na may pharyngitis or sore throat. Otitis media is the infection or inflammation of the middle ear. Normally, yung pharyngotympanic tube, flat yan tsaka close. But, every time na lumulunok tayo o kaya naghihikab, uh, it opens briefly para ma-equalize yung pressure sa middle ear cavity with the external or atmospheric pressure. This is a very important function of the eardrum. No, hindi lang siya basta nagva-vibrate freely unless yung pressure on both of its surfaces ay the same. Kapag ang pressure ngayon ay unequal, yung eardrum nagbabulge inward or outward. It causes hearing difficulty and sometimes ear aches. Nararamdaman ito, yung ear popping sensation na to, kapag nag-equalize uh, ng pressure, very familiar uh, to anyone who has flown an airplane, lalo na kapag magte-take off or magla-landing. The ossicles are also there in the middle ear. Ang ossicles, these are the smallest of the bones in our body. But the function of these bones is to transmit vibratory motion of the eardrum to the fluids of the inner ear. So, nung nag-vibrate yung sound na tumama sa eardrum, itatransmit ngayon nung buto ng middle ear, which are the ossicles, yung motion na yon papasok ng inner ear. And in the inner ear, yung fluids doon aandar kapag na-vibrate na yung vibratory motion coming from the ossicles. Like dominoes falling. 
uh, you know how dominoes fall pag mga nakatayo siya. Yung eardrum, no, whenever it moves, nag-uumpisa ang lahat doon sa hammer. From the hammer, natatransfer yung vibration to the anvil. The anvil in turn passes the vibration to the stir-ups, which now presses the next structure, yung oval window of the inner ear. Yung movement ngayon ng oval window, nagsiset siya ng fluid of the inner ear into motion. Eventually, na-excite yung mga hearing receptors kapag na-stimulate yung vibratory motion na yun. Let us now discuss the structures of the inner ear. The osseous or the bony labyrinth is a maze of bone chambers in the inner ear. Tatlo ang structures niya. We have the cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canals. So, bony labyrinth yan. And the, in the above photo, you can see the three structures. The below photo is a cross-section of the bony labyrinth. And inside, we can see that it's filled with a plasma-like fluid, ang tawag doon, perilymph. Suspended now in the perilymph is a membranous labyrinth. It's a system of membrane sacs that more or less follows the shape of the bony labyrinth. Yung membranous labyrinth itself, meron din siyang fluid sa loob. It's a thicker fluid this time, ang tawag naman doon, endolymph. How does the inner ear now function in terms of hearing? Going back to the middle ear, yung total force ng vibration na na-exert doon sa eardrum, again, it reaches now the oval window. Hanggang sa na-vibrate na nga siya, na-transmit yung mechanical vibration from the ossicles. Now, nung na-reach na, sa oval window, yung vibration na na-exert na nag-start ng eardrum, ito ay automatic na magsiset ng motion ng fluid ng inner ear. And uh, this time, yung pressure wave na yon magsiset up ngayon siya ng vibration to further stimulate the receptor hair cells there. Once stimulated, yung mga hair cells ang magta-transmit ng impulse along the cochlear nerve. It's a division of the cranial nerve 8, which is the vestibulo-cochlear nerve. Yung auditory cortex ngayon ng temporal lobe, doon siya nakakarating where interpretation of the sound or hearing occurs. And that's why it's very important that we consider yung fluid ng ears kanina na nando doon sa loob ng bony and membranous labyrinth. Looking back again at the vestibulocochlear nerve, si vestibule and semicircular canals naman yung very much responsible for equilibrium and balance. Let us now discuss the homeostatic imbalances related to hearing and balance. Deafness is hearing loss of any degree. There are two kinds, conductive hearing loss or sensory neural hearing loss. When we talk about conductive hearing loss, something interferes with the conduction of sound vibration doon sa fluids ng inner ear. Pwede siyang permanent, pwede siyang temporary. It's as mild as nag-build up yung earwax sa ear canal, nagkaroon ka ng otitis media or others. A person with conductive hearing loss can hear by bone conduction but decrease or lost sa air conduction. Yung sensory neural hearing loss naman, there is actual degeneration or damage either sa receptor cells, sa cochlear nerve, or sa neuron mismo ng auditory cortex. Dito naman, uh, the clients with sensory neural hearing loss cannot hear in bone and air conduction, which leads us to these two tests na nag a ng effectivity ng air and bone conduction, yung Weber's test and the Rhine's test. And using this test, no, kailangan gumamit ng tuning fork. 
Sa Weber's test, ina-assess ang bone conduction. Sa Ryan's test naman, both ina-assess ang air and bone conduction. You see in the photo the steps how to assess. And this is further discussed sa ating exercises sa laboratory. Equilibrium problems naman, they are usually very obvious. Merong nausea, dizziness, and the inability to maintain balance itself. Last is the Meniere's syndrome or Meniere's disease. It's a serious pathology of the inner ear. May kasamang hearing loss and the hearing loss is progressive. Yung tinnitus naman, that's a ringing in the ears. And vertigo, it's a sensation of spinning na minsan may accompanying nausea. Next is the sense of taste. Ang receptors sa taste and olfaction are classified as chemoreceptors because they respond to chemicals in a solution. Taste buds are widely scattered in the oral cavity. So, meron tayong five basic taste sensations and uh, again, chemoreceptors ito as mentioned earlier. Taste buds are the receptors for the sense of taste. So, meron tayo sa tongue, soft palate, and inner surface of the cheeks. But of the 10,000 or so taste buds that we have, most of them are in the tongue. And because of its location, yung taste bud cells, they are subjected to huge amounts of friction. And they are routinely burned by hot foods. Kaya pag kumakain tayo ng may init na pagkain, the taste buds are damaged. But they are quickly replaced every 7 to 10 days. And ang responsible doon, the basal cells found in the deeper regions of the taste buds. And what are the five basic taste sensations? In the photo, we can see also yung mga location niya doon sa tongue. We have sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. Umami is the latest and this means something that is really delicious. How taste works in the tongue? So here we can see a bigger structure na pinalaking taste bud. Yung dorsal tongue surface is covered with small peg-like projections. So, yun yung papila. And now, may mga specific receptor cells na nagre-respond sa chemical na na-dissolve in the saliva. No, yung mga epithelial cells, ang tawag doon, gustatory receptor cells. Yung gustatory receptor cell, as shown in the photo, meron siyang long microvilli. Yun yung gustatory hair. Nakaprotrude yun through the taste pore and when stimulated, they depolarize. Kasi nga, na-receive -re ng receptor cells yung chemical. Kapag ngayon na-stimulate yung impulse automatic na transmit sa brain. Three cranial nerves are responsible. Cranial nerves 7, cranial nerves 9, and cranial nerves 10. They carry impulses from the various taste buds in the tongue or in the oral cavity para makarating ng gustatory cortex. At sa gustatory cortex of the brain, do na interpret yung taste bud. Cranial nerve 7, as mentioned earlier, is the facial nerve. Nandiyan ang anterior tongue sensation. Yun naman cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal. And cranial nerve 10, yung vagus. Nandiyan ang posterior tongue sensation. Sense of smell. Ang ating ilong or our nose is capable of picking up small differences in odors. Let us now discuss how it happens. So here, we can see the structures of the olfactory membrane. The thousands of olfactory receptors, ito yung receptors for the sense of smell, they occupy an area in the roof of each nasal cavity. 
So, yung air, nag enter ng nasal cavity. Automatic, it should make a 90 degree turn para makapasok siya ng respiratory passageway below. As we can see in the photo, where the nostrils are. So, sniffing, pag tayo sumisingkot, it causes more air to flow superiorly across the olfactory receptors and that intensifies the sense of smell. Now, yung mga olfactory receptor cells, they are actually neurons equipped with olfactory hairs. May long cilia sila na nakaprotrude from the nasal epithelium at ito yung continuously na bibathe doon sa ating mucus secretions. Now, uh, yung receptors sa cilia na stimulate siya ng chemicals. Again, na dissolve nga siya ng mucus. Na transmit yung impulse along the olfactory filaments. At yung olfactory filaments na yan, they are bundled axons all of, of olfactory neurons. Collectively, ito yung nagiging, nagbubuo ng olfactory nerve or cranial nerve number one. Yung olfactory nerve ngayon, dere-derecho, siya yung nagkoconduct ng impulses to the olfactory cortex of the brain. There, the odor is now interpreted. Ang olfactory impressions are long-lasting. And uh, very much a part siya of our memories and emotions. For example, pag nakaamoy ka ng isang perfume, you are very familiar with that perfume. And the smell of that perfume reminds you of someone. Yung olfactory receptors then are exquisitely sensitive. Gaya ng auditory receptors, they tend to adapt rather quickly lalo na pag na-expose sila sa unchanging stimuli. In this case, yung odor or yung amoy. Kaya minsan, naiisip nyo, kapag uh, meron kayong suot na pabango, minsan, after a while, quickly, hindi mo na naaamoy yung sarili mo. But, you will pick up the scent of another perfume on someone else. Last is the sense of touch. This time, we have clearly described already paano natin nararamdaman yung sensation uh, nung tayo nag-discuss pa lang doon sa integumentary system. So again, parietal lobe controls yung touch sensation natin. Remember the Merkel cells. Sila yung receptor cells in the epidermis. Tapos, yung papillary dermis, siya yung nag-house ng pain and touch receptors. So again, mga receptors yan sa skin. And then yung sensation, aakyat via the ascending tract of the spinal cord hanggang makarating ng brain, interpret siya ng brain. That's the end of the discussion ng special senses. Thank you very much.